Hey, D and Deers, me and my heroes are in the dungeon of Kairos, right? And to give you a sort of a general location where we were, we came in this room down here at the bottom. Turned out that we couldn't open that door. We rolled, we went this way, we crossed the pit. Oh, found a ring plus one. Came this way, and we're now in this room and it descended. I do have to make a <clears throat> Wandering monster check. I don't really want to do it because uh, these things are horrible looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll. And you're going to see me just pensively find out whether or not. Okay, we're. In, I, I think I'm going to read this again because it doesn't make sense to some degrees. It's saying, uh, it says, roll a random encounter check every 1d6 every three turns or so so i'm doing this every three rooms because it's easier for me to count and essentially we're in 10 minute intervals so this would be the third one i guess you want to say right when an encounter happening with an encounter only happening on a one if the interest have been in a closed room since the last check or on a one to two otherwise okay so on a one if they've been in a closed room so essentially a closed room so on a one okay let's try it out um, this is gonna be horrible, all right? All right, four. Wandering monsters do nothing but drain resources. They're not fun. They're annoying, all right? So four, I'll take a four, all right? So we're going back to our our map, see where we're going, um, and we decide we're gonna go even, so we're gonna go this way. So we're gonna go this way, come up to here. Now we got some choices, right? Once again. And we'll make this one even. We're going to come this way. i will put this way. Even this way. Odd, we go this way. And we're not going to check for that secret room unless we turn this direction, right? So let's see what happens. Evens and odds. Even and odd. We are even. Even, of course, means that we're going to be turning, right? And going into this one big room over here all right let's clear this thing boom all right my my guys kevin is in the front let's just make sure we understand this i think you might try levitating just right off the floor so it doesn't make any noise can you do that i don't know let's have some fun with that whole time he's going to be hearing so i'm going to make a roll all right so before i go through all that trouble 31 does it have anything in there Arr, i don't know well yeah um oh is it 31 oh okay all right so oh he actually we can roll I, I, it doesn't matter he's not gonna hear anything he rolled a six he doesn't hear anything anyways um the, the room is illuminated by magic apparently equivalent to continual light there are six finely crafted statues in two ranks across the room. They appear to be elven warriors in chainmail with swords upraised towards you. Ah, uh, uh, he would inspect this. There's no way you wouldn't. You're looking for gold and stuff. Let's go in here. Um, let me set this thing up. Uh, this is gonna go bad. All right, that's all right. Well, you know this is going to happen. Eventually, something's going to jump out and get us. So I'm going to set this thing up. I have a, the image over here. I'm going to be looking at it as I do it. So we're coming in to the sides. Let me move this so it kind of reflects what we're looking at. It's going to look like this. Okay. And my dudes are going to be coming out. Oh, we use our imagination. One, two, three. All right. Four, five, uh, six. Okay. And uh, he comes in this way. My guys are coming with us. And we'll just position these guys here, here. Uh, three. Okay. Where's four? Four, five, and six. All right. This is going to suck. So he's coming in. Probably detecting any traps. Now, living statues. Ooh, armor class is two, hit dice three, damage 2d6. Statues will animate and attack if anyone advances into their ranks. Well, that's what they're going to do. 
Well, well, this is where bad things happen. Okay, fair enough. All right. <laughs> Tim is just going to walk in and come and take a look at number three, right? And probably, I would think, see if he walks around the outside, right? I, I would walk around. I would not walk in the middle of him, but that's just me. The other guys will follow behind. Let's just do this, right? So, looking, they might not. Okay, let's just say it. Let's just play it out, right? Okay, wait. Hold on a second. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, they go to the middle. That's the bad part, right? Five, six, they go towards the middle. Five, six, they go towards the middle, of course. All right. So Tim is just going to kind of walk in between them. They're going to animate. We're going to have a big mess on our hands. We're going to have to go crazy here. All right. So this is not going to work. Uh, or I think statues. I don't even know what these things are. A living statue. I know that's kind of hard to believe, but I, I don't know what we're doing here. Okay, this this is probably going to be bad. So, um, does it, are they they're alive, but they're statues? Living statue. I got to look it up in the book. Are magically animated monsters of the contrast immune to spells and effects which target the mind? Likewise, to those things which affect living creature because the player are not truly alive. Living statue form function of service. It does not. Oh, yeah, it's made a do. Okay. This will be horrible. At least this is a three hit dice. Mon they said there's six in the book, so three is better than nothing. All right. They got to fly into action. Let's say uh, they start to move. These guys are on high alert. Let's roll for initiative. The solid colored one is my men. And we're going to beat them. So statues start to move when we leave. Yes. Right? We came in here and they started moving. Wouldn't we try to get out of this room? Maybe they're protecting something? Uh, I would say yes. But they could panic and not do it. So let's say a one or a two on this dice, they just panic and get out of the room. Living statues are crazy. <laughs> Can you believe that? Right? Nah, they're going to fight them. They're stupid. All right. Okay, let's do this. All right. You're going to go here. You're going to go here. First of all, we're going to put our backs up. We're going to go this way. Okay, let's. Um, <laughs> all right, let's do this. Shoot for armor class of six. This is the rough, kids. Rough, rough, rough. All right, this is not going to work. I do not have something to stop this. There's no spell. Nothing's going to work on them. Ooh. Okay, right. Let's do this. All right. Okay, Timmons, I'll start with you at the top of the order. He's hitting with a short sword, right? So he's, let me see, a 16. Ooh, hits an armor class of three. Uh, it's not going to affect him. The armor class is two. This, I, they're going to find it real quick. They better run. All right, let's go with uh, Bergenoff. All right, let's, he rolled a four. He's a miss, right? Let's see if uh, Elric the White, oh, he's hitting armor class of seven with that. He's not gonna hit it. Well, Baltazar is gonna stab one with a dagger. Uh, it's gonna miss two. So I'm gonna let these guys take rounds here. One and two. Forget ten minutes. So um, this is gonna be a, a statue popping on Elric. Max of this, right? And this statue's gonna be popping on. Bargainoff, and that's going to miss him too as well. So that's not bad. But I mean, it's going to be hard to fight. We got to fight him though. All right, let's all jump on one. That's the best way to do this if you're going to eliminate something. All right. Well, I guess you got to watch your back. Let's go the these two guys over here. These two guys over here. I don't think you guys can fight these things. I don't know why you would sit there. Yeah, got to be a better way. Let's cut out. I'll make him cut out. There's no way he would stay. All right, let's do this. Let's see if we run. I say 50% we run. One, two, three, we're out of there. God, of course you're going to stay. Why not? I don't, you really didn't do anything, so we'll find out. All right, let's try these two guys first. So Timmins and Bergenoff are fighting the one guy over here. Let's see what they get. 
right, Bergenhoff is definitely going to hit, going to crush that thing with the halberd. All right. All right. Oh, three hit points with the damage on one of them. All right. Let's make him the, uh, just for Snicks, the weakest. I know I'm cheating a little bit, but that's how I would do it as DM. I'd let him take a first kill because it's going to reduce the amount of onslaught that's going to happen. Next round, the other guys are going to be on him. So we're going to see how this works. So uh, let's hit this thing with the other two guys. Here we go. One, two, 19. Oh, that's going to hit. Right? That's cool. And then uh, he's hitting with flail, right? 1d8. Uh, oh, four. Should let me make double damage because it's a big thing. Four, five hit points of damage on. I'll take the next lowest guy. Five. Wow, these things are huge. Two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. I gotta see that they're not doing much, and these guys are not gonna make their advance. Okay, now we gotta make a decision. Do we leave? We're outnumbered, and they're pretty strong. So if it's five or left. We're, we're leaving the room. Two. We're out of there. God, thank goodness. Right. So they're going to make a back out. There's a lot of retreat. There's no way. Why would you fight a statue? Let's just get out. Got to be other ways to do this. So they're going to come back into the hallway. I don't have a whole portal. Uh, we'll find out whether or not they pursue. I think they're guarding something. So let's see. 2D6. This is how we're going to play this. Higher the more they're going to pursue them. Oh, they're not going to pursue them. Cool. Snake eyes. They go back to their positions. Nice. We're just going to play it. That's the way they were made. They're made to protect that room, and they're not going to leave it. Cool. All right. So, but there must be something important for you to have statues like that. Yes. Right? Uh, of course. Of course. So let's go back and take a look at our map for a second. All right. My hero is piled out into this hallway, and they just stopped at the hallway play like that that's a good story right and then they're going to move down and pass this thing right here and of course the dwarf is going to have to make a roll four or less to see whether or not he finds that secret door he could right four or less to see what happens six he does not notice the secret door well good for us we're going to come down to room 33 and it's just right down the hall Tim is going to listen at the door. He doesn't hear anything. Uh, so it looks like we're going to push into that room. Right? So to catapult what's going on there. This is... Oh, my gosh. The, the door opens, right? And I'm going to read the description. Cobwebs hang thickly from the ceiling in the far left corner of the room, partially covering the doorway there. A dark, brown trail of what could have been dry blood leads from about the center of the room to the door on the right. Lying beside that door is, is that stub of a torch. Hmm. So I actually reverse all that. They see the stub of a torch near their door. So this doesn't help you as the viewer at home, but if I was to show you what this looks like, it looks like this. Um, here, is the torch and so there's a trail of blood what yeah if the trail of blood goes in the center room let's see where that 33 is all the way to their door well this is weird because they haven't written this if you went that direction suppose you didn't go that direction well, that's kind of goofy right i'll show you guys what i'm talking about so this one is way, we're way down here now. Wow, we just kind of missed. This was a statue gallery. Okay, look well, at this. 33. Look at this. It says, the door leading out at the right is stuck, right? So here it is. Um, door leading out at the right. I assume you went that way, right? Stuck, but we just came in that door. It's really confusing. And then it says, ah. Uh, Yeah, partially covered doorway. We dry blood leaves there. Uh, uh, uh. There's nothing. Just beyond the hallway, there's skeletal remains of a dwarf clad in rusted plate mail. 
Besides the bones of the dwarf are a rusty warhammer and shards of a broken bottle. Well, they would have passed that in the hallway, right? So I didn't see. I guess as a DM, you should read ahead of time. I'm trying not to do that to make it fun for me. So they passed all this stuff when they went down there into that room. But there's nothing else in that room, just cobwebs. Hmm. Okay. Well, about ten minute mark. I'm going to freeze this for now. They are officially, um, for all practical reasons, they are in 33, and they still got to check it out. Okay. Thanks for listening.